and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It will bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This was spoken by God after the fall of men in the presence of Adam, Eve, and the serpent. But what does it mean? For in this pronouncement brought hope to the human family, but to Satan it brought fear. For when God spoke these words, it was meant to reveal to the fallen pair their only means of salvation, and to Satan it pointed out his inevitable defeat. For when Adam sinned, sin entered the world, and death, and this sin and death passed to all men because of Adam's sin. Thus, all of mankind has an inherent nature to sin. Hence, by default, all of mankind being born with an inherent nature to sin will automatically and naturally yield themselves unto disobedience. But Genesis 3.15 speaks otherwise. For this is what it means, and I will put enmity or hatred between thee, the serpent, and the woman, Eve, and between thy seed, the serpent's offspring, and her seed, which is Eve's offspring, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So Eve's offspring was to bruise the head of Satan. But who is this offspring, and what does all this mean? John in the Isles of Patmos would have been given a vision concerning who this offspring is, and this we find in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and it reads as follows, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour the child as soon as he was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. For the vision depicts none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. For the Bible says, I will declare the decree the Lord had said unto me, Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Again it says, Seeing then that we have such a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. So in actuality, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 reveals to us that the Messiah, Jesus, would come and destroy the head of the serpent, totally putting an end to his reign. For when Adam and Eve sinned, they gave over their allegiance and their inheritance to Satan. Henceforth, Satan became the ruler of the earth. Their allegiance was once towards God. Now, their offspring were to be in subjection to the tempter's beck and calling to sin. They gave over their inheritance also. The earth and all that was in it was Adam and Eve to rule over and to care for. But now this realm became that of Satan. And lastly but most important, they gave up eternal life. 
for eternal life was an inheritance predicated on obedience to God's law, which they forfeited. Now their lots was to be death. But before the foundations of the world were laid, there was a lamb that was slain. The Bible speaking of this lamb reads, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worked all things after the counsel of his own will. This lamb was Jesus, who not only provided an avenue whereby we are forgiven of our sins, but in counsel with the Father, they had devised a plan that mankind's lost inheritance would also be restored, both the earth and eternal life. But how? In our previous videos, we set the foundation which should give us a platform to understand this question. So at this point, we will recap. Let us therefore assume that time before Lucifer's creation represent an infinite time in the past where God ever existed. Because God is a God of love, before God created Lucifer or any beings, he enacted a plan for his outflow of love created beings that have free moral will and can choose to obey or to disobey. Thus Elohim entered a plan just in case one of his creatures were to disobey. There would be a system in place to redeem them. And it is in the book of Exodus that we see the first thing God created. Exodus 15 verse 17 reads, Thou shalt bring them in, and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. So before any being was created, God created his holy hill, his holy mountain, his temple, his sanctuary, his Zion, his new Jerusalem. For if one of his beings were to fall, yet through the sanctuary, they could receive an inheritance. And it is after God creates his sanctuary that he does the unthinkable. It is in Proverbs 8 that we find out what God does after he creates his sanctuary. And it reads, I led in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning, or ever the earth was. The word possess is quana, and it means to erect, i.e. create by extension to procure, especially by purchase of God's originating, creating, redeeming his people. The word set up, nasak, means to pour out as a libation. A libation is a drink offering. It also means to anoint a king. It also means to set or to install. Everlasting, olam olam, which means properly concealed. That is the vanishing point. Generally time out of mind, past or future. Therefore what is expressed in Proverbs could be read as follow. I led in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment 
that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed or erected my services to redeem in the beginning of his ways before his work of old. I was set up or installed as king or as an offering from everlasting, which is a time concealed from the beginning or ever the earth was. So we saw in Exodus that the sanctuary was created before any beings were ever created and this sanctuary was the Lord's inheritance. We saw also in Proverbs that those who love the Lord shall receive an inheritance from him and we saw that this was possible because he the Lord was set up as a libation or an offering and as a king. And now that Adam and Eve sinned, the plan of redemption had been set in motion. The sanctuary service had to commence in type until the fullness of time would come and the true lamb which was to be slain would be slain, commence in the redemption plan for all who believe in his name. And it was Christ himself who showed Adam and Eve a type of that which will happen to him in the future. They had to slay a lamb, and this lamb typified Christ. For the Bible says, unto Adam also and unto his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothed them. And this clothing was to be symbolic of Christ's righteousness covering their sins. For the Bible reads, Wherefore, as by one man sinned entered the world, and death by sin, and so death pass unto all men, for that all have sinned. For if by one man's offense death reigneth by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. For we know that it was by Adam's disobedience that all were made sinners. But it is by Christ's obedience that all can be made righteous. But how? The Bible reads, And so it is written, The first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. In our next video, we will delve deeper into this.